being sent to another level three school whose test scores are lower than our current scores. How dare y'all say y'all gonna close down this school? It's not right, we not giving in. Save our school! Save our school! This is very tough and there's a lot of emotion and I appreciate that. But I know what the opportunity of a high quality education can give a child. This is a problem that's been a decade long in the making, should have been addressed before. The utilization crisis threatens our ability to provide every child in every school with access to a well-rounded, high quality education. Education is a human right. What do we do? You should not have to go to war with your school district to help your children. But to them, our children are collateral damage. They're expendable, but they're not expendable to us. So that's where the battle lines are drawn. It's March 2013, and Lafayette Elementary School is one of over 100 schools threatened with closure. Lafayette is located in Chicago's gentrifying Humboldt Park neighborhood. Rosemary Vega's children are the third generation of her family to attend Lafayette. It's time. Come on. Lord, we ask that you guide us today. We ask for your protection and guidance in our family. Amen. 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 Let's go. But our fight's not over. Just, I just can't believe it. It's honestly a, almost a living nightmare. They promised my children a quality education. The receiving school has nothing that my children have now. Over the past 13 years, Lafayette's enrollment dropped from 930 to 470 students. The current CPS utilization formula says that Lafayette could enroll 1,320 students. Not only do we have one of the largest special ed populations in Chicago, we also have the largest string orchestra in the elementary school level. To break that up and have those programs be splintered around neighboring schools seems bizarre. It's a painful process. People are very connected to their neighborhood school. That's a good thing. The problem is we have more school space in many of our schools than we have kids to sit in the seats. When you have 200 kids, you can't have all the support infrastructure that you might have in a larger school. We think it's clearly better educationally. It will clearly be better financially in the long run. But this issue of surplus schools is rooted in policies CPS enacted a decade ago. We had a policy called Renaissance 2010, in which Mayor Daley announced the school district would open 100 new schools in five years, which we did. About two thirds of those schools were charter schools. Precisely as we were opening these new schools, we were also seeing declines in enrollment. There's been a flight of population precipitated by the demolition of public housing. The African-American population in particular declined by about 200,000. As new schools were being built, CPS also started closing schools they deemed as chronically underperforming. I don't think the public really understood that we were launching a policy that would be an annual ritual of school closings for the next dozen years. We also have a huge budget issue. Our tax revenues are going down, and that is a real issue in Illinois because the state contributes the least amount of money to schools of any state in the country. CPS finances have never been good. 
I mean, they have always had problems. And then they come to the Chicago Teachers Union with a 10-figure ask every single year. So we need you to give up this, we need you to give up that, so we can do this. Well, there are other things you can do. It's a matter of priorities. In 2013, Mayor Rahm Emanuel announced that a large number of schools needed to be closed to cut the deficit. But unlike Renaissance 2010, this time the rationale to close schools would be based on utilization, not school performance. I went around and started doing walkthroughs of some of these schools and found that they're not underutilized at all. They're using a space utilization formula this year that doesn't take into account things like special ed populations and other programs where classrooms are smaller than 30 to 36. It's really just a matter of what's politically expedient in terms of whether it's closed for low enrollment or underperformance because the schools that are closed are always both low performing and underenrolled. They usually are in the poorest areas of the city where students are coming to school with very low levels of achievement on average. In early 2013, 129 schools were proposed for closure and a series of community meetings were held so parents and teachers could defend their schools. CPS representatives took notes and listened, but did not respond. We need to protect our children. Give them a safe and quality education that we would promise. This is not an issue of underutilization. It's an issue of miscalculation. Why is CPS willing to pour money into the charter schools but little or no money in the public schools that already exist in Chicago? They pretended to listen to us. There was no one to answer questions. Not a single person from the actual Board of Education were at these meetings. And I don't, it was not a conversation. We were told we were going to have a conversation and we didn't. On May 22, 2013, the school board met to vote on the final school closings. Public comment at the meeting lasted two hours. Each person was allowed two minutes to talk. The plans for these massive actions do not appear to be ready for implementation. The majority of schools impacted by the push to close down the schools are impact, impacting predominantly children and babies of color. You're attacking our children and breaking our communities. And we need these schools. If there's one thing you've done right, that I can actually say is that you have made our community come together and fight this battle. CPS CEO Barbara Bird Bennett also addressed the board. We must ensure Chicago is a system that's truly equitable and that we're no longer a tale of two cities. Like it or not, the system does have to change. We were having to make some tough decisions. We're in a reform mode, change is hard, and I think you need people who are willing to do what they think is right, regardless of whether or not it's popular, because doing what we've been doing clearly isn't working. EX 6, 7, 8, 31, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 13, EX 15. Madam Secretary, if there are no objections from my fellow board members, please apply the last favorable roll call vote. They did the same thing that they've done since 2001. The board members go into the room. They may raise a few questions, but basically they vote to close all of these schools. Rosemary and Jesus, along with thousands of Chicago parents, must now decide what to do next. Should they send their children to the designated welcoming school, another neighborhood school, or apply for a lottery spot at a magnet or charter school? I honestly don't know what to do right now. I don't know if to go walk in my home school, register my children's at Prickster. It's just too much to process at once. We just got over rallying for three months, marching, going to hearing after hearing, you know, crying our life out to these people. And so we were just hoping that somebody was listening through all these hearings, through all these meetings, these rallies, and somebody was going to take this into consideration because this is supposed to be for the kids. And it wasn't enough time to make a proper decision, so we chose not to make one.
Over the summer, Rosemary and Jesus moved to a nearby community and chose to send their children to Pritzker Elementary, their new neighborhood school. Mr. Weibel was hired to teach music at Chopin Elementary, the welcoming school for Lafayette. As a result of the school closings, over 1,000 teachers were laid off. We didn't have the whole school just pick up and move here. It didn't work that way. When they closed Lafayette, they fractured a lot of relationships, not only amongst the faculty, but amongst families as well. There's a thinking in education reform right now that if we're constantly closing our lowest performing schools, we're consistently sort of improving schools. It's a policy that will disproportionately affect African-American kids because African-American kids are the lowest performing kids in uh, almost any urban school district. I've been studying school reform for 15 years now, and I see people trying the same things over and over, and they always think, this time we're gonna get it right. They did try to do things somewhat differently this time, but social systems are very complex. There are always gonna be unanticipated consequences. One year on, if we look back on it, um, I don't think we could have expected it to have gone better. People may disagree on our assessment of the benefits, but we think they're significant. I think what's at stake is the future of thousands of children who deserve the right to be in stable schools that provide them what they need in order to be able to compete, to become who God intended them to be.